Hi guys, uh, just a disclaimer for the quality of the video is not because of me or I've done some bad editing or anything. Uh, it's mainly because of how the camera is and that it delivered, well, it was, well I got it and it had a common fault with it and it's still got it uh, two years on, uh, which is the uh, blur, well, which is to do with the blur of the lens, so that is nothing to do with me, unfortunately, and there's nothing I can do uh, to help that. Uh, I haven't got a microphone set up because I'm doing a bit of a location drive, meaning that I'm driving to a location which I need my phone to take me there. Uh, so you're coming for a, a drive along with me down to the Hare and Hound on the Honnett into Sidmouth Road and because um, it's my mother's 50th birthday on the uh, 24th uh, so we're all going out for a nice lovely meal, a nice carvery and uh, trying to get this fucking thing set up and it doesn't want to fucking get on there, this, there we are uh, I can hold low Come on, there we are. In you go. Uh, so yeah, I've uh, it's been an eventful past couple of years. I've worked for Stagecoach, did a few drive longs in preparation for that, and um, I found out I couldn't release any of the content. Uh, reason being is because when I was working for them, that they uh, wanted to basically keep the company safe and everything else so I couldn't do any of that and that's the reason why you've only had any drive alongs um, so you know it's uh, it went all a bit peak tong with that so yeah apologies for that ladies and gentlemen but uh, yeah shit happens sometimes doesn't it so anyhow right it's gonna take me 27 minutes right uh, my parents already ahead, they've already left, so, and don't worry, that thing's on silent anyway, so you won't really have to put up with that. <coughs> um, so yeah, I just had to ask the neighbour to move his bike, because I, otherwise I was going to hit it, and I didn't really want to be having to put out insurance claims. Uh, so, and yeah, please excuse any mess and wherever I've, this was a quick, imp this was sort of like a quick one really. I'll uh, get this fan to redirect it, otherwise you won't be able to hear me. Is there anything coming out of that? No. Well, I'm just going to keep it turned on a bit so you can hear me. Uh, so, anyhow, right, so I'm going to keep cool because I don't want to open my windows, otherwise you won't be able to hear me at all. Okay, Nora. He's parked his bike in a really stupid freaking place. <sighs> I'm not going to get out without fucking hit. Hold on a second, guys. Got a tad bit of room. Not much. I'm literally going to be able just to only go back till I hear it go clonk. Yeah. Right, okay. That should do, mate. Right. Oh, fuck's sake, let's get on uh, So, yeah. Obviously, I've done up my hair a bit. So. That is fucking close. No marks, excellent. New part there, bloody voxel on a corner like that. Fucking stupid. Anyhow, but yeah, like I was saying, um, apologies for the no drive long thing. Uh, it's been it's been a very long time, and I've just really had to sort of pick the top place in time, really, and. I haven't really had the time to do it until now, so apologies for that. Uh, but yeah, and also, as you can probably see, driving a new car is the Peugeot 206 1.4 litre. Uh, 
when it came out of the factory it had 90 brake horsepower top speed 111 miles an hour and a 0 to 60 time of 14.2 seconds i think it was um so it's not it's it's classified as sport because of the type of engine and the type of power but um unfortunately because of how of how cars have evolved over time that this is no longer considered as a sports car or even sporty um, you see a lot on uh, Auto Trader with uh, Astras, Clios, um, Corsas. One that I used to have, but not a sports version. That was a basic one point. That was a basic one point zero liter engine, actually. So uh, yeah. So all right. But yeah, as you can probably tell, my figure has changed quite a bit. And that's because a couple of weeks ago I joined Slimming World, and in two weeks I've already lost eight pounds. So I'm only six pounds off for losing a stone and getting my stone certificate, which I'm happy about. Um, so yeah, right. Let's see what's going up on up here. Eh? But yeah, during this drive along, I'm going to be talking in a, a bit about conspiracy theories, um, problems with this generation in these days, and everything else. First of all, I'm going to start off with the biggest controversial story, 9-11. Um, I'm stuck in a bit of a mood which is called cognitive dissonance. Um, what that essentially means is for when there is a true there where there is one story but then there are many other different stories which go which basically they go against the facts which leaves you insecure it leaves you vulnerable and it leaves you doubting and there's a uh, and you don't really know where you stand, and I'm, um, and I'm a bit kind of like that with 911. To be quite honest, I don't know whether to trust even our government because there's conspiracy theory going around the 77 attacks. Um, I'll give you the reason why I believe and the reason why I doubt it. I'll start with the reasons why I doubt it, then coming on to the truth of it. Uh, the reason why. I doubt it for everything else um, is because you would believe that the American government wouldn't do such a nasty thing and that they wouldn't want to kill over nearly 3,000 people or just over whichever the figure is now um, So you believe that they're um, that they wouldn't do that, and that it was actually 19 terrorists, four separate jets, two in the World Trade Center, one down in the Pentagon, and one in a field somewhere in Pennsylvania, which is United 93. Um, and you and I'm sore of believing that that would be true to a point. Um, but I have my doubts on all that because the truth of the fact is that examiners, explosive experts and um, demolition experts, uh, scientists, architects have all gone to prove that that could not have happened because there were thermite samples and iron sulfurs found in the confines of the, of the constructional steel structures which held the towers up. And now that brings me on to another matter of melting temperatures and boiling temperatures and everything else. Um, 
jet fuel burns at around approximately 1800 degrees Fahrenheit steel doesn't bend until about I think it was uh, around right about 2500 I could be getting these figures all wrong but I'm just going from what I'm trying to remember and yeah it's it leaves you really doubting for the truth and of how the towers came down some say it came down by terrorists some say it came down by demolition experts and it's for what science can disprove of is for what science can disprove of the news that we were told and the news that we were told was 19 terrorists but science goes to believe and to, and to show that it wasn't terrorists the science shows that demolition materials were used demolition materials were somewhat to of a, of a degree integrated into these structures so what are you to believe in that do you believe the official story or do you believe the truth and that is cognitive dissonance it leaves you doubting massively and it's left me doubting for the past few years because I've been into conspiracy theories for about 10 years since I was a young and really um, so yeah it kind of leaves you really doubting it and it leaves you to think how that could have happened now some would say that it would be juvenile to think that the American government did it but unfortunately there's a significant amount of proof which goes to prove that it very well could have been but in the 9-11 commission report there were tons and tons of questions that were left out and they and which also leaves you to doubt and it leads you to think that they're hiding something that they don't want us to know. And it's that doubt which leaves everyone in cognitive dissonance. So, pick your verdict. What do you think happened? I personally believe it was government. reason being because of how it happened the way it happens as well and um, and for what happened So it kind of leaves you really doubting everything, really. And I won't be too surprised to think that it was. And, it, and here's the thing, as there's all this leaking technology coming along, I personally believe that one day the US top secret servers will be hacked. And it will show that the whole entire thing was an inside job which I thoroughly believe which I'm always going to believe so for anyone to say without reading the science behind it to say that it was terrorist I think you need to look at the evidence again um, 
lost that one. <coughs> also, a scary revelation came about a couple of months ago, well, about a month ago now, that uh, learner drivers on the 4th of June 2018 will be allowed to drive on uh, motorways while well, they have not passed a full license and while well, they've not passed um, you know the standard test now I'm a professional driver I've got my DQC card I'll get it out in a second actually so you lot can see it so you don't uh, disbelieve me in that but uh, some of you viewers know that I do have it um, I think that it's got to be one of the most biggest blunders of the first magnitude by government by millions. It has to be. There is no way that it can, that it's safe. Because you're going to have learner drivers doing winter, like mid winter. Uh, um, lessons w with well being on a road which is suited for drivers going about 70 miles an hour these learner drivers after a few lessons or however long because right basically before I go any further that the rules are that the qualified and basically that the qualified driving instructor has to have a dual control car. That has already been passed by government that they have to have it dual control. That there is going to be no way that they will allow a learner driver being in a car without it. For safety reasons. Um, and that the motorway lessons which are going to be part of the test will have to have lessons on the discretion of the instructor. Now, one thing that does worry me in the whole of everything of this is that there are going to be driving instructors that will highly, that will have a bit of false confidence in the driver and they will say okay I think it's suitable enough to go on the motorway right we'll take him out today and then it's going to be one massive accident and that's it insurance claim massive crash all over the news learn a driver crashes on the M52 or whatever between junction 5 to 6 and uh, 5 people died and whatever I think that's got to be the one of the most stupid fucking decisions that government have ever made. And I'm not going to lie, it's scary. Because next year I'd love to sit, well, in 2020 I'd love to see a full year's report of 2019. Um, to try and show. Uh, the accident rates and figures that I would absolutely love to see reason being is because I want to see if it's actually viable if it's safe if it's good enough or whatever else um, I think that's going to be interesting Considering the years of controversy that that idea has had amongst others and to what they are now planning to do leaves me kind of questioning the whole thing. I personally think it should be allowed. But yes, on the sympathetic side of things that they... What the fuck is he doing? Oh, cyclist. Fuck's sake! Oh, go on, mate. You could overtake him. 
Oh, come on, man. If you want to overtake him, I will. Now, oh, come on, we're on national speed limit road here, so put your foot down a bit, mate. It's not Sunday best driving. And, well, yeah, as I was saying, um, on the sympathetic side of things, um, they do have to learn. And yes, the shock of currently as it stands of passing your test and then to go on a road that you've never been taught how to drive on. Here's a scary matter of when I passed my test nearly three years ago. I remember the anxiety, the, you know, whatever else. I remember every single bit of that and it was horrible. Uh, so, and I went on it about two, three days after I passed my test. And I didn't feel quite safe enough so I contacted my driving instructor to uh, give me further lessons on it and he was more than happy to, to be quite fair and, I'll, and I appreciate him for it and he did a good job and he showed me everything and everything else and what the rules are and what to look out for so they do have to learn but I do think it is still too dangerous it just is and sorry but it is dangerous Yes, by facts, they have the lowest rate of accidents, but you can't take your risks. And it's those risks that matter. And it's horrifying knowing that something really, really bad could happen. And something bad will happen. And when it does, I'll be the one who's saying, well, we told you so. And that's literally what it's that's literally what's gonna happen. Um so yeah. And in other news, um, DJ Vici died, age 28. No age to die, really. No age to die. And it is somewhat upsetting really and when I found out I shed a few tears and it's horrible knowing that he died at such a young age he was going through multiple health problems you know he had gallbladder stones removed but yeah, you drove, I think it was, 2014, well, it was in 2014 or something. So, really, it, it's, it's sad, but they're saying that the death isn't related to his health issues, which does throw up another few questions. What was it that killed him? And there's no, um, there's nothing to kind of say significantly what it was as the family want their privacy and everything else and that's understandable I would if my son died which I don't have one but I'm saying if he did I would want my privacy to be quite fair and um, and well yeah it's 
very sad. He, out of everyone, oh, come on, hurry up, for fuck's sakes. This is a steep hill, I need to keep my revs up, you dickhead. Biggest leaders by bar none. And only a few days ago, Dale Winton died, age 62. Yet again, reports of how he died are unknown. So, TV presenters of all time, along with Bruce Forsyth and everything else. So, anyhow, I'm reaching uh, towards the Heron Hound now. Got half a mile to go. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching appreciate it for taking your time if you reach this far into uh, the video I'd like you to comment hashtag Luke Ellis Devon okay uh, just so I know who's been watching all the way through trying to target my audience a bit uh, it's still a growing channel hi guys on our way back now uh, so yeah, I started thinking I would uh, carry on the drive along from last time. Um, so yeah, yeah, very nice meal. It's quite fair. I'm absolutely full. Let's put it this way for me and my day sins have fucked off out the window from this one. Um, to be quite fair, I went well over. But uh, anyhow. Uh, I will work around that for the rest of the week. But hopefully you're all doing okay. Uh, right, let's get out of here because I'm in Holland right now. Uh, right. Here we go. About the uh, death of um, what we call it, Dale Winton. Very sad, by all means. Very, very sad. And such a terrible loss. And the fact he was only 62. Excuse me, makes things all look worse. You know, still a tad young to die. So, he got taken from us too early. But more can be said for uh, Avicii. Where he died in, in his home in Sweden. Um. <sighs> My eyes are just adjusting to have my uh, shades on for a while now. Um, oh, yeah, hopefully, I haven't got any chocolate around my mouth, have I? No, I haven't. It'll be alright. So, yeah, on the way back home now, about 20 minutes away, so it's not too bad. Um, Yeah, for 
of the stuff that's going on in the news as well. Um, Donald Trump setting up, a, you know, nuclear missile, well, chemical weapons, and stuff like that. And, I was, and there was a scare story that went around a couple of weeks, uh, about a week ago now, of uh, of a World War Three. I've got to be honest, if we do come to World War 3, that's when we really do need to get our shit together. Because, um, the way this is all going is, uh, too far, and I think, to be honest, both... I think all of us just need to... Can't I just say, well, yeah, we need to drop all our weapons, hand them down and just shut up. It's gone too fucking far. I'll tell you that for a fact, right? Uh, too many people dying in this day and age. Oh, fucking sun picked up again. Uh, there's too many people dying. At the moment, we've already lost tens of thousands of innocent civilians in. Um, I think Siberia. Not Siberia, sorry. Syria, that's the one. Uh, you know, due to that and the ISIS threat and everything. And, um, it just all needs to calm down. It's gone too far. They were just, it's because there's the thing, these countries just get to war too fucking quickly. every day we're killing hundreds of innocent civilians who've done absolutely nothing wrong but yet everyone seems to have a perspective thinking that it's a ISIS threat and then they are drop a homing missile bang they think oh yeah that's another ISIS you know house location whatever you want to call it done and it's all gone too far now far too far It's absolutely gone too far. And it's disgusting because now we're having a immigration problem. You know, there's uh, people from uh, Syria and other countries of such a like trying to flee from their countries because of the way of how it's all turned out and because of the way it's turned out you know we've got people living on the streets you know they much rather live on the streets here than having their home bombed and it's quite upsetting I wouldn't want to live in a country like that. And yeah, I did used to be a bit racist about the matter of thing. I know, oh, no, just shut the borders and everything else. So I, I admit I was thinking, well, yeah, just send the Syrians back and then they can sort their own problems out. But up on further thoughts and up on further, can uh, see reconsidering uh, my actions of what I said to some people I think well really we need to keep them open because they are in a country for where they are getting targeted so badly and it is disgusting you know fancy your home randomly getting bombed all because a member of government so they think oh yeah it's a Syria like ISIS plot house and everything else and then go bang bomb there you are there you are there's your mum dad sister brother gone it's horrible to think that that's going on and within those countries as well that these ISIS have and the radicalization of it all they're all getting up together and sort of like thinking 
oh yeah, oh, they disobey our rules, right, we're going to be head them, or if the wives don't do what they're told, we're going to cut wear off them and everything else, but it's it's about trying to de-radicalise these moderates who are going around thinking it's okay to do this. And unfortunately there are ISIS territories here in the UK. There are people, sadly, like there was what, which is a story I read up two years ago, maybe a year ago now, uh, of this 16 year old girl. Uh, I think she was from Berkshire or somewhere else like that. And she was hunted online by a member of so called Islamic State. And she changed religion. Everything else like that. She had gone and changed religion and then she was all become part of it and found dead. You, you, you know, what can you say to that? You can't. Apart from there are very sad, disgusting, vile human beings in this world who've got nothing better to do with their lives than target and prey on others, especially those who are vulnerable at a young age where they <coughs> believe that all this is going to happen and they're going to get all this and all that, giving them a false hope. And I read this article and I just cried. Of how this is going on. And terrorism doesn't just happen in just big cities. What happened in Exeter in, I think it was either May or June 2008, for where there was a bomber radicalised by these so-called Islamic State members and um, and he had Asperger's Syndrome the same, it, exactly the same diagnosis that I've got and he was targeted and he spent hours and hours and hours away from shut in his bedroom, his mum didn't care, she was doing drugs, selling her body on the streets, i.e. for people who don't really know what I mean by that, dumbing it down, she was a prostitute. And in turn of that, you know, there was, there was neglect on the sun. And because of this neglect that happened, he didn't get a decent upbringing. His father was never around. And he then got brought in by these uh, so-called Islamic State members online. Just, I think we don't know what social media platform it was, but probably Facebook, because Facebook didn't really have much security back in those days. Um, considering the recent um, scandal that happened a couple of days, well, about a few days ago, of uh, over five million users' information being leaked, um, and because of that, it was targeted, and I was. And I found this out when I, a year and five months ago, was sitting my um, stagecoach training. Um, we were taught counter-terrorism at, at stagecoach, and this was 
one story that really, you know, shocks a lot of people's faces that this was the guy that bombed the Princess A shopping centre, the giraffe. Uh, basically, him obviously being autistic and not really having much of a um, how can I put it without it being too no I'll say a bit too precious um, with him not having much of a great greater thought process he didn't know what he was doing he thought he was doing it for the world a great good but actually he made things a shite sight worse and he went into the toilets where he was supposedly going to be preparing the bomb to set it off but as in doing so he he set the bomb off in the toilet while preparing it some people might laugh and I think that's quite funny which in a way if you have a dark sense of humour it is funny to be quite fair Preparing the bomb, bang, oh no, it goes off long. But the dark side of it is that that bomb wasn't fully prepared how it should have been. So, in turn, of that, the explosion wasn't as big as it, sh as it, w as it would have been if the whole entire plan had gone, to, had gone, you know, as after, well, as if the whole thing had gone to plan. So, really, it was quite grateful that he only suffered major injuries. And there was one other guy who suffered major injuries, and it would be about 10 people dead. But that was enough to shock everyone. And, um, and I was in only in year 11. So this was about 10 years ago now, so yeah, 10 years. And to think that this was going on 10 years ago and it's still carrying on today just shows that, they've, that there's been no improvement. And yeah, it's all great with the government trying to say to us, oh yeah, we're cracking down on terrorism and on these terrorists but I think only just adding to the violence and getting and sending people out to bomb houses and everything else is only just making matters worse because it's only adding the fuel to the fire and because you're adding fuel to the fire it's gonna blow out proportion which it has it's only been since 9-11 that terrorism has exploded but as we know as I explained earlier I think that's an inside job but of course, everyone else will believe the official story. Um, but since 9-11, the whole entire war on terrorism has exploded into a case of everything, really. And it's, it's, gone, it's gone far too far now. And it's disgusting. And I hate this government. Because they're saying, oh yeah, we're going to send out more troops to here we are, whatever. Try and fight. It is being, it was firstly the Taliban and now it's ISIS. <coughs> Although the Taliban is the, is something of a different story altogether. But, um, got this fucking Peugeot van behind me. Literally trying to kiss my ass. Fuck off, mate. I'm doing the speed limit, alright? So piss off. Um, but yeah, it's. It's all blown out of proportion and it just needs to be fucking sorted for once. But it's not going to sort itself out the way it's carrying on. Because the way it's carrying on is only making things worse and as it, as it makes things worse 
more li more innocent lives are lost, and as more innocent lives are lost, so is the integrity of this country. Really, we're supposed to promote, you know, uh, this all good British feeling and everything else, and there are members of the of the British National League and well, basically the BNP. Well, it's that's BNP. So it's same thing by a different party. Uh, the British National Party. And, um... And they're saying, oh yeah, right, yeah, okay, we'll shoot these packy guns and that's it, fuck off, like, you know? But it's... Yeah, we want them gone. But we don't... What I'm not trying to say, well, yeah, it is just Pakistanis and Iran's terrorising this country. It's not because there are there are British people as well. British people do it, okay? Not just Pakistanis and Iran's and Syrians. So everyone who thinks it's just Pakis need to fuck off, okay? It's not just them. It's it's Br British people do it. People from France, people from Spain, people from Estonia. There is so many, there's so many different types of people who do it as well. It's not just the racial stereotype of Pakistanis. When are people going to fucking grow up and see that? Hey! Right? It, it just... It pisses me off. It's not just Pakistanis, okay? End of. But, I am nearly, I'm basically just around the corner now, but. Yeah, that's my thoughts on terrorism, really, for the most of this part. Um, and yeah, it, uh, the fight just needs to stop, really. And everyone, anyone else who agrees with me, please comment. Please comment hashtag stop terror. Okay? For anyone who agrees, remember, comment hashtag stop terror. Anyways, I'm home now. Teddy boys, have a good day. Or good evening, or good night, or whatever you're doing right now as you're watching this. And uh, see you again on the next video. See you around. Goodbye.